Simplify a quadratic divided by a quadratic. Whenever I see something like this, I'm thinking factor thoughts. This right here, the fact that it tells me that x can't equal negative 2 and negative 1 is going to help me out with my answer in the denominator. We'll get there. Let's focus on the numerator first. Let's factor this out as much as we can. Immediately, I see a 3, a 3, and a 6, which means I should be able to factor out a 3. If you see a quadratic, you're thinking factor thoughts, and maybe you can pull a number out, which I can. x squared, if I pull a 3 out of 3x squared, I get x squared. If I pull a 3 out of 3x, I get just an x. And if I pull a 3 out of negative 6, I divide, which is negative 2. Now we'll have a fraction bar. Now I need to come up, I'm not done yet, I'm probably not done yet, I need to come up with two numbers that add up to invisible 1, but multiply out to negative 2, and so I'm thinking those two numbers would be positive 2 and negative 1. So x plus 2 and x minus 1. These guys add up to positive invisible 1 and multiply out to negative 2. That's my numerator. Now let's take care of the denominator. Again, these are hints, but let's not deal with that right now. I could probably bring out a 6, and there's no probably about it. I can bring out a 6 because a 6 is divisible from 6, 18, and 12. By dividing a 6 out of this guy, I'm left with x squared. By dividing a 6 out of 18x, that gives me a 3x, and dividing a 6 out of regular old 12 is regular old 2. Now I need to come up with two numbers whose sum is 3, adds up to 3, but multiplies out to 2, so let's go with... 2 and 1. Now again, this has a factor of x plus 2 and x plus 1. It tells me that x is not allowed to be negative 2 and allowed to be negative 1. Why does that kind of help me figure this part out? Well, if I plugged in negative 2, this whole thing becomes 0, which makes the whole thing become 0, and you can't have 0 in the denominator. Same thing with negative 1. So if you notice that, then good for you. And if you didn't, no big deal. It's not going to matter anyway. But what I can do is since I have something times something times something on the top and something times something times something on the bottom, I can eliminate any some things that are exactly the same. But that's not all. I notice that I have a 3 up here and a 6 down there, so I can simplify 3 sixths to 1 halves. So that gives me x minus 1 on top and 2 times the quantity x plus 1 on the bottom. Now wait, now wait, now wait. If you're thinking, can I uh, eliminate the x's and eliminate the 1's? Nope, because that minus sign makes these guys two completely different things. So my final answer is going to be C. Nothing else. So one and a half looks like it should be promising if you want to get rid of stuff. But even if you were to get rid of an X and a one, you still have that negative floating around, which, you know, you only really see in C and D. So pretty typical uh, simplifying fractions that are factors and stuff and polynomials and things and stuff and things. I like that stuff. Fun, 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 fun.